climate change is clearly affecting our national parks. Yes. At, at Joshua Tree, we're seeing fewer of the namesake saplings growing because they can't survive the heat. Yes. How do you think uh, we can get species like these to help drive climate policy? Well, the big thing I tell everybody this year is vote. You have to vote. This election, 2016, is huge. Very important election for the environment. I am not going to tell you for whom to vote. Oh, no. Heavens, no. But uh, I just I encourage everyone to take the environment into account. And keep in mind, for you historians, the Environmental Protection Agency was created by a very conservative president because the word conservation meant conserve. It didn't mean just not do. There are 400 national parks, everybody. Brooklyn Bridge National Park today being but one of them. So there's a national park near you. And so go find your park. That's what we like to say. Find your park. You will appreciate the diversity of ecosystems. And I hope you also appreciate the history. This is part of uh, what our ancestors left to us, our, our heritage. And so we want to preserve it for future generations so that there will be national parks here in 2116, 100 years hence. Unless something extraordinary happens, I don't anticipate being here in 2116. But there are a few people here today that will be here, and we want these parks to be for them. So one of the good things is that we're seeing overall park attendance is going up. However, we're seeing with uh, the younger audience, they're not going. It's mostly an older audience. Uh, for example, at Yellowstone, since the mid-80s, visitors who are 15 and younger, the number has uh, been cut down by about half. How do you think? Is, that, is part of that because the baby boom is not as boomful? My experience with millennial-aged people is they're very outdoorsy. By way of example, my nephews and nieces are all having kids, uh, but they're just now, uh, these people are not even 15 yet. So uh, we'll see what happens. I am a baby boom product, uh, and so there, there are fewer people coming of age now than there were, I think, when I was a kid. But how do we get not only a... Uh a younger, more diverse audience to go, but also to appreciate and, and make a personal investment uh, in, in conservation. My claim is if you come to a national park, you'll have an appreciation for it. If you come out, if you find your park, as we say, during our 100th anniversary of the National Park Service, you will have an appreciation for national parks and you'll want to preserve them. The National Park Service has a uh, $12 billion budget, but <laughs> no deficit, actually. Deficit private partnerships seem to be inevitable. How do you think we can balance the need to preserve our parks uh, without giving into corporate interests? Well, it depends on which corporation is interested in what. If you had a corporation that was going to develop a evergreen tree that was resistant to the pine bark beetle, then maybe your corporation could be given a tax break. I'm jamming here. Not all corporations are inherently bad for the environment. That's all I'm saying. And if we had, if we encouraged renewable energy, wind and solar in particular in the West, it's very reasonable that corporations who move their businesses from fossil fuels to energy writ large would no longer want mineral rights to drill under national parks. And they would, in a sense, be contributing to the preservation of our national parks. What about that? Corporations are not inherently bad. We just have to manage them through another word that's just so weirdly received right now, regulations for the better, for the common good. The Endangered Species Act uh, mainly looks at the home ranges of animals and plants, but climate change doesn't have borders. How can we use these species uh, to make a meaningful push for uh, meaningful climate policy nationwide? In general, Ecosystems with more diversity are more uh, durable. As things change, uh, evolution happens more rapidly when you have more diversity, and so the ecosystem can adapt uh, or make enough changes. And by way of example, um, people realized that there were fewer and fewer saplings growing along rivers in Yellowstone. And that's changed because we introduced, reintroduced wolves. And you, you probably wouldn't make that connection. I'd like some more trees. Well, we need wolves. And it turns out the wolves predate uh, the elk that were eating 
they were overpopulated and were eating the shoots, the trees as they started, the seedlings. So uh, this is a, another example. I'm not saying that it's all about wolves. It's an example of the complexity of ecosystems. And our national parks are where we preserve ecosystems.